Okay, we're going to take a look at a few example problems that have to do with uh, the ideas from section 10-4 where we were looking at mostly inscribed angles um, or angles where the vertex is on a circle and maybe its sides are made of chords or maybe its sides are made of a chord and a tangent. So in this first example, um, we have this picture here and you know there's four parts to it, but basically what it's asking us to do is find any missing angle or any missing arc measure. Um, I think it it just lasts for arc JKL. So I guess in order to find arc JKL, we probably need to find the measure of arc JK. So we can add it to the 46 right here. We have to find the measure of arc MJ. We have to find the measure of angle KJM. So that would be this angle here. And we have to find the measure of angle KLM, which would be this one over here. So um, I'm going to kind of set about finding all of these missing parts that I need to find. Now, one of the things I notice is that if I look at this picture, it's an inscribed quadrilateral. And one of the things we learned that because of the ideas of an inscribed angle having an, a measure of half of the in, intercepted arc, then um, what that means, that what, you know, what we can end up proving from that is that the opposite angles in any inscribed quadrilateral are going to add up to 180. So if I look at that, that does tell me, well, this 49 and this angle right here, they have to add up to 180. They have to be supplementary. So I guess I could go ahead and put 131 right there because that's 180 minus 49. I know that's going to be 131 degrees. That wasn't one of the things it was asking me to find, but maybe it's going to help me find one of the things I am missing. Um, if I look here at this 49 degree angle, that's an inscribed angle. It's got its vertex on the circle. So I know that the arc measure has to be two times what that angle is. Um, the way we talked about it when we were learning about this is that the angle measure will be half of the arc measure. But if you kind of reverse that, it, it, it also says, if that's true, that it implies, it implies that if I take two times the angle measure, it has to equal the arc. Basically, I just multiplied both sides of this little word equation by 2. I took this side times 2 to get rid of the 1 half, and I had to do this side times 2, and that gave me 2 times the angle. So if I wanted to look at um, the, the arc that this angle intercepts, it would be this arc right here. It would be arc JKL, which is the first thing I actually have to find here. So I guess I can do for, for A... I can say that the measure of arc JKL is just going to be 2 times 49, 2 times this angle right here, because that's its inscribed angle. That's that arc's inscribed angle. And that's going to be 98 degrees. Okay, so that's 98 degrees. Maybe it would be helpful just to go ahead and figure out what this part is. Now, that means 98 is from, J, uh, from L all the way to J going through K. Well, if this part of that is 46 degrees, then this part would be 52 degrees, right? We could just do 98 minus 46 and get 52 degrees. That's 52 degrees there. Now, how's that going to help us? Well, one of the things that we could do to find this arc is we could realize that all the way around the circle might be 360, or it would have to be 360 degrees. So if I take, if I take 120 plus 46, plus 52, plus the measure of arc JM, all of that has to equal 360 degrees. So if I just subtract all of these from 360, what's left over should be the measure of arc JM, right? The measure of arc JM would be 360 minus the 120 minus the 46 minus the 52. And let's just think about what that would give us. Um, Let's see, that would be, let's go 240 minus 98. So that should be 142, I believe. It should be 142 degrees for the measure of arc JM. Um, now, this question asks about the measure of angle KJM. So that would be this guy. It's an inscribed angle, right? Let's look at where its arc would be. So one side of it comes out here, and one side of it comes out here here. So that is intercepting this arc right here, which has a measure of 46 plus 120, 166 degrees. 
So the measure of angle J uh, or sorry KJM measure of angle KJM would be half of the arc for that angle, which is uh, I'll go ahead and write 120 plus 46. Right, it's this part plus this part added together. So it's half of 166 degrees, and half of 166 degrees is 83 degrees. So now I know that's 83 degrees. Now to find the last answer, which is angle KLM over here, I could look at the arc that it intersects or intercepts, or I could think about the fact that it has to be supplementary to this one over here because it's an opposite angle and in an inscribed quadrilateral. I think I'm going to go that route. The measure of angle KLM is going to be 180 minus the 83 degrees right there. And so that's going to be 97 degrees. Let's go ahead and move on to the next example. Another kind of picture where we have a whole bunch of stuff going on and we have to find some missing arcs and angles. Um, let's do them in order this time. First of all, it tells us that segment or line DF is a tangent at point E. And so we have an inscribed angle IC. And then we have a couple angles that are formed by a chord and a tangent. We have this angle, angle DEJ, which is formed by a tangent and a chord. And we have angle FEH, which is also formed by a tangent and a chord. Uh, the first question asks us to find uh, the measure of arc EGH. All right, EGH. That's the core, or that's the arc that's intersected um, by this angle. It's intercepted by angle FEH. So I can say that the measure of arc EGH will be two times the measure of the angle that's intercepting it, which is angle FEH, right? Just using that same idea that I wrote down up here, that an arc's measure will be two times the angle's measure when the angle has its um, vertex on the circle, that is. So that's going to be 2 times 72, which is 144 degrees. Now that I know that, I'm going to write that on the picture, just so I know that that arc is 144 degrees. B says, what's the measure of angle E, or sorry, arc EKJ? Hmm. Now that is intercepted by this angle DEJ, but I don't know what that angle's measure is. But if you look, I do have the measure of the arcs that make up the rest of the circle besides that. All right? So the measure of arc EKJ plus the 106 down here, plus the 144 here, all that should be 360 degrees. So if I do a little kind of algebra thinking here, I can just take the 106, the 106, and the 144, take those two, subtract them from the 360, and whatever's left over should be my uh, arc EKJ measure. So let's just take a look. 360 minus um, let's see if you combine those together. I guess you get 250. So this is like 360 minus 250. So that should be 110 degrees. 110 degrees there. And then the next uh, question asks for the measure of angle HEJ. The measure of angle HEJ. We know that that should be half of the arc that it intersects, since it's an inscribed angle with its vertex on the circle. It does intersect that 106 degree arc, so we can just say it's going to be half of 106, which is 53. And lastly, angle DEJ, measure of angle DEJ, it's another angle with its vertex on the circle, so we know it's going to be half of whatever arc it intersects, which is 110 degrees. Half of 110 is 55 degrees. And just to check, right, if this is 53 and this is 55, does that make sense? Because if I think about it, all three of those should add up to 180 because they kind of combine to make this straight line. So does 55 plus 53 plus 72 give me 180? Well, these two combine for 108. 108 plus 72 is 180. So I, I feel good about those answers. I think that all sounds good. Finally, we have um, example three here. Another kind of complicated picture where we're supposed to find four different things. Let's look at the first thing we're asked to find. The measure of angle PRQ. PRQ is this angle right there. Um, let's just look at the four things we're asked to find. Angle PTR would be this angle right there. 
and then angle RSC, or I'm sorry, RST, would be this guy right there. And then finally, angle SRT would be this guy right there. So let's look at what we could use to find any of those things. Now the first thing I see is I have a diameter right here. Right? Um, I'm assuming that M is the center of my circle, I guess. But if that is true, then this is a diameter, which means that this angle right here, uh, angle RST, is intersecting a semicircle. So that tells me right away that the measure of angle RST has to be half of 180 which is 90 degrees. Okay, so that one's 90 degrees. We'll put that 90 degrees. I guess I could have made a right angle there, but I'll just say 90 degrees. Um, what else do I know? Well, I want to look at some of these other clues that I have. I see 86 degrees right here for arc SR. And I also notice that this angle here, angle STR, intersects that arc. Now, that's not an angle that I was supposed to find, but I could real quick just write in 43 degrees, right? I know that that angle is going to be half of that arc. And then I might notice that I have a triangle where I know two of the angles. And so that guy right there, the measure of angle SRT would be, um, I could look at it as 180 minus the 90 degrees for that angle, minus the 43 degrees for that angle, and that's going to give me 47 degrees. So that's 47. Now we're over here. Um, let's look at this angle right here. I notice that it's also intersecting a semicircle. It's kind of harder to see, maybe, but if you look at the endpoints of the arc that is intercepted by this by this arc or this angle right here, they're going to be uh, T and R, and arc TR is a semicircle. So that angle, the measure of angle. Um, oh, I put that in the wrong spot. <laughs> I guess that's not even what I was supposed to find. PTR is this angle right here. Oh, gee. But it might still be important. So let's just think about that for a second. So the measure of angle uh, PTR is what I'm supposed to find here. But I do know that that's going to be a 90 degree angle there. Maybe we'll come back to that. Um, angle PTR. Let's see. That intercepts this arc right here. All right, so I need to know, if I wanted to find that angle, I would need to know this arc's measure. I know this part of it's 82, but I don't know that part yet. Hmm. Why is this 106 here, I wonder? Why is this 106 here? Well, if you look at, that's an inscribed angle. It's got its vertex on the circle. And it's intercepting this big major arc right here, from R through S all the way around to P. So I know that would be 212 degrees. It would be two times whatever 106 is. Let me write that on my picture real quick. From here all the way around to here would be 212 degrees. And then I would have right here 82 degrees. So if I add 212 to 82, that's 292, right? 212 plus 82 is 294 degrees. And that would only leave arc PQ to complete the full circle. So that must be 360 minus 294, which is going to be 66 degrees. And if that's 66 degrees, then this angle right here, the measure of angle PRQ, is going to be half of that, 66 degrees. So that's going to be 33 degrees. Okay, so that's 33 degrees. Um, let's see, can we find this angle yet? Oh yeah, because now look, we just said... It would be half of this arc, right? This arc right here, that goes with this angle. And that arc's measure is 82 plus 66, right? That is 82 plus 66. 82 plus 66 is 148 degrees. So if I just take half of 148, 74 degrees, I feel pretty confident that that angle there is 74 degrees.